How's it going guys? This is a quick review on the Quiet Tone Mesh Pad from Sabian. I've had this pad for two years, so I'm going to go through the pros and cons so you can make a right decision on whether you think this pad is for you. So let's get right into the meat and potatoes and see how it sounds. The pad is very innovative, well built and very pleasing to the eye. It's amazing how little material has been used to make this. On the outside here you can see the normal rim, the same as you'd see on every other drum kit. Inside that there's a little wooden piece which separates that from the actual skin itself. On top we have the mesh pad, which I have to say is quite durable. On the back we have three pieces of metal running from each tuning log to each tuning log. Basically this is how the skin is tightened. On the bottom you have four of these rubber legs. The idea of this is that you put it down on a flat surface and you can play away. But unfortunately the sound increases so it is no longer a quiet tone pad and turns into something more like a loud tone pad. What I've noticed about it and something that I had to deal with was this metal on metal sound. It's like a rattling and it's, you see these two metal pieces that I showed you earlier, they hit off each other. So what I have done is I've put two socks in between. That seems to have uh, eradicated that problem. So it is very, very quiet now. Very annoying rattling sound. So that only happens when you do tighten the skin up itself. So how do you tighten it? One would think you just pop the tuning key and off you go, but unfortunately you can see the nut move at the bottom there. That means that this is absolutely useless, so you can't just use the tuning key itself. So you have to run down to the old tool shed and grab a vice grips or something of that nature and kind of clamp it on there to the actual nut, and then you can get your tuning key out, and then you can tighten it. It has to be a fault in the product, it's been like that since day one, and it turns something that should be very easy into quite a bit of work. One of the problems I do have with it though is the articulation, for instance, when you're playing an accented note against a non-accented note, you don't get the same kind of articulation that you would get if you had, say, just a normal Promark pad or a Thomas Lang pad or something like that. Because of the mess heads, I mean, it bounces back so, so much, and it's just very unrealistic. So you will find there's things you can do on this that you can't do on a snare. Alright guys, let's wrap this up with some pros and some cons. Unfortunately, the cons do outweigh the pros on this one. Okay, so we're going with some pros. This is, without a doubt, very compact. Having said that, I don't know of any practice pad that isn't. It is, hands down, the quietest pad that I've ever used. And that is simply just because of the mesh pad. So if you are looking for a mesh pad kind of feel, this would be the one to go for. Cons, well, how you actually tighten the skin. The fact that it's very unstable unless it's in the snare stand. Yes, it is compact, you can travel with it, but you have to be careful what bag you put it in. You can't put it in a bag with any sharp objects or rough edges because it's mesh pad and it will rip. The biggest deal breaker here is the price. At 60 bucks, it's just not worth it. Would I advise you to buy this? Not really, but there is a cheaper option if you do have an old snare. You can go out and buy a Remo Silent Stroke head and put that on an old snare. You're saving 50 bucks right there and you're pretty much getting the exact same product at the end of the day. Guys and girls, the decision is yours. Comment and let me know what you think. Hit the like button or the dislike button. Share the video if you can. Take it easy. Have a good one. Bye bye.